Hey babe, what hey. you doing? Well, I'm just refilling some Nitrox bottles. We just had a big tech weekend down in South Carolina, so just trying to get them filled back up. That way if customers need some Nitrox, they can get it. So what exactly is Nitrox? Well, Nitrox is a mixture of gas. It's actually the same gas you're breathing now. It just has a higher partial pressure of O2 built in. Would you like to learn a little bit more about it? Sure. Cool. Let's jump into today's video and let's learn a little bit more about Nitrox. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hicker Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are gonna be notified every time we upload new content. Now, as we stated in the teaser, we're gonna learn a little bit more about Nitrox today and what it is and how do we know if it's gonna be right for us. So with that being said, let's jump into today's video and learn a little bit more about Nitrox. So babe, tell me again what Nitrox is. So nitrox is really no different than what you're breathing right now. It's just a mixture of oxygen and nitrogen. The only difference really is it's the partial pressure or the percentage of the oxygen within that gas. Anything from 22% all the way up to 99% mixture of or partial pressure of O2 is going to be classified as nitrox. Now we have recreational nitrox that goes up to 40% and then we have technical nitrox that goes all the way up to 99%. Now if we cross that threshold into 100% partial pressure well then we're just breathing pure oxygen it's not really a mixture anymore but basically nitrox is anything between 22% and 99% partial pressure of O2 mixed with nitrogen to make enriched air nitrox yeah so how do we determine if a tank has air or nitrox well, there's several different things that we've got to do. If we take a quick look at all these cylinders here, you'll notice all these cylinders here are just plain. There's no stickers on them. There's really no identification marks on it. Um, these yellow cylinders here, they have a big green and yellow sticker that say nitrox. They'll also have some type of indication sticker up here at the top that's going to notify us what the blend actually is. Now, one thing that I will caution you on is you can't always trust the green and yellow sticker. These two bottles back here, there's no identifying marks. There's no green or yellow stickers. However, these two cylinders do have a mix of nitrox in it. Kind of the same with this bottle here. This bottle here simply says deco, but there's no green or yellow sticker. So we really, once again, cannot trust the green and yellow sticker. What we want to look for is other indications, such as this one says there's 50% in it. And we can also check the inspection sticker too. If the inspection sticker says it's kind of marked 402 or something like that, then typically it's going to be. However, just because it has a marking doesn't necessarily mean there's nitrox in the bottle. A lot of these tanks, like these right here, do say nitrox on them, but there's no nitrox, it's just air. So let me show you the surefire way to determine if there's nitrox in the bottle. So the surefire way to determine whether there's nitrox in a bottle is to analyze it. And I've just got a Pro O2 analyzer here from Nuvair, and basically it comes down to this little sensor guy right here, and what we're gonna do is use that to determine how much oxygen is actually in this mixture, or how much partial pressure of O2. So if you'll watch that number, as I turn this cylinder on and put the analyzer, you're gonna watch that number go up. And as you can see, there's 37% oxygen within that mixture. So this bottle is actually a 37 blend or a 37% nitrox blend. But the only surefire way is, of course, use an analyzer. We don't always just trust the sticker or the labels that's on the cylinder. We always analyze it to verify. So babe, yep. how do you make nitrox? So there's three different ways to make nitrox. It's actually a very simple process. If you have a compressor that has a membrane system in it, basically that membrane is going to take away some of the nitrogen, which is going to add O2. There's actually two other ways, and we use the other two ways to actually make it. One, we use what's called a nitrox stick, or otherwise known as continuous blending. When I cut the compressor on, air is going to come through this chamber, or this plastic tube, if you will, and it's got a bunch of agitators in here and we're gonna mix that air with oxygen. We're gonna be pumping oxygen in it at the same rate that the air is coming through and it's gonna be mixing. We have another little analyzer here at the bottom of it and basically that analyzer, when it gets plugged in, 
is going to read the partial pressure of O2 within the system. Now once that's done, it's going to go through our compressor system and it's either going to go in one of our bottles or one of our bank tanks very simply and that's a continuous blend. So we're basically mixing inside of a plastic tube. And then the last way that we do it here of course is partial pressure blending. Now partial pressure blending is really cool because you can get any mix at any given time anywhere say from 22% all the way up to 100%. And the, basically the way that works is, is we're pumping pumping O2 through a booster system that's going to go straight into the bottle and we can do some math to determine how much O2 we need for a given blend. Then once that's done we're going to bring it all the way back over here to the fill station and then we're going to pump straight air into the mixture. We're going to dilute that O2 down to whatever blend that we need it. So it's a more accurate system to do it that way. It just takes a little bit of extra time and it does tend to cost a little bit more with partial pressure blending but you're almost guaranteed to always get the blend that you actually Need. Okay, babe. Next question. Yeah. Who can use nitrox? That's a great question. And to be honest with you, anybody can use it as long as you're trained to use it. And the great thing about nitrox training, most agencies, it's classroom only, which means you're going to spend a couple hours in the classroom with the instructor. You're going to go to their fill station. You're going to analyze bottles, which is one of the biggest things with nitrox is learning how to analyze bottles to make sure you're getting the right mixture. You're going to learn how to read labels and understand exactly what it says. And the main thing is, is that we're being safe when we can use it. But once again, the great thing is anybody can dive nitrox. You don't have to be a technical diver just to dive nitrox. So babe, do I have to do anything special to my equipment to use nitrox? So that's a yes and a no kind of answer here. Let's talk about the no really quick. The no is simple. Your regulator from the factory is going to be ready to use for nitrox. That is, of course, up to a 40% partial pressure of O2. Anything above that, then of course, yes, you would want to change out the parts kits to make sure that the oxygen is not cor too corrosive, say, on the O-rings and things like that. But now as far as your cylinders go, it's a resounding yes. You do need to have your cylinders O2 clean. Doesn't matter if it's partial pressure blended or if it's uh, continuous blended or even if it's a membrane during the mixing process we do run the risk of a fire hazard now these cylinders are probably never going to blow up on your back but during the filling process they do have a potential risk of an say it's some type of explosion for the fill operator so yes your cylinders do need to be o2 clean and one of the ways that we check for that of course is with a visual inspection sticker as you can see here it's going to either be stamped for air or all the way up to 100 percent and the old adage about the green and yellow sticker being a good indicator we don't really look at those anymore today basically what we look at is the visual inspection sticker and even for the content of what's in it we still don't look at the green and yellow sticker. We basically just look at the identification sticker that's been labeled once the cylinder's been filled. All right, last question. Babe. Yeah. How do I become nitrox certified? That's probably the easiest thing about nitrox. You go to your local SSI training center, get signed up for a nitrox course today. A lot of centers kind of like ours, they will combine a nitrox course with your open water course as well. So if you're just now getting into scuba, sign up for both. You usually get a discount when you do that. And like I said, it's just a couple extra hours of classroom with about 30 minutes of practical um, practical work where you go in, you actually analyze a couple of cylinders, fill out a logbook, and that's pretty much all there is to it. So check with your local SSI training center, see what courses they have today, and I promise you, you will really enjoy nitrox once you start the program and you get into it, and you'll see that there's a lot of benefits to nitrox for you as a diver. So there you go guys, that's nitrox in a nutshell. Now there is a ton of information that you're actually gonna learn in your nitrox program, such as how deep you can take nitrox or use nitrox, what blends are gonna be best at certain depths, and of course, how long you can actually breathe on nitrox before we start having risk of say, CNS oxygen toxicity and pulmonary oxygen toxicity and things of that sort. But if you got any questions, comments, or concerns, check out the links below. We did a complete playlist on the SSI nitrox program, and I really think those videos are going to help you out in the future. And even if you're already certified in Nitrox, use those videos as a review session for you in case there's something you forgot. But if you like this video, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely, if you got any questions, drop me a comment down below and we'll discuss. But until our next video, take care, God bless, and I'll see you in the next one.